come back in my explanation and implementation of the perceptron I briefly mentioned transfer functions in fact even in my implementation I showed you how to implement one of them and because these functions are quite important in understanding how neural networks work I thought I'd give them a separate video now the transfer function what it does it translates the input signals to output signals so we mentioned before that we have a weighted sum of the of our inputs we compute the sum as we explained before and then we pass that sum to our transfer function and that transfer function controls the output now so it does have an influence on the behavior of our artificial neural network just like the weights and bias the transfer, the transfer or activation function also plays a role now what I'm going to do I'm going to explain to you uh, briefly four types of uh, common transfer functions and then after that I'll give you uh, a list of a few more just for you to be aware of, of them and to know that they exist. The first one we, we're going to start with is the threshold transfer function or the unit step function which simply compares the weighted sum against a threshold value and outputs the output accordingly so if it's larger than the threshold then output 1 if it's less, less than or equal output 0 that's what the function there says but the threshold here is just a value of 0 so if the input is less than the threshold then output is 0 if it's larger than the threshold you, you notice now the instant rise or the instant and sudden change of the output if the uh, weighted sum is larger than the threshold then the output becomes 1 the next one is the piecewise linear where we have a linear uh, transformation of the input into the output so if you notice here what, what the function here is saying that the output is zero if the value of the input is less than or equal x min so x min is here this is the value um, of our input and this line here represents the output so if the input is less than x min x min is here then the value of the output is zero and this is x max if the input value is larger than x max so you can know you can think of it as uh, having a range now of minimum and maximum input uh, or minimum and maximum values if x, if the input is larger than x max larger than or equal x max then the output becomes one however if the value of the input is between those two between x min and x max then the output is a linear function of the input mx plus b is the sort of equation of this line here yes some people think or some people say that having a, a linear f uh, transfer function is, just, is, is equivalent to ha having no transfer function at all but that's how it works it's nice and easy to understand the third one is a very important one the sigmoid function the output of this function changes continuously as the input changes observe it doesn't change linearly but it changes continuously if you notice here this is the equation of the um, of the sigmoid function f of x equals 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus uh, some uh, some coefficient times x and if you notice now the value of the output is always between 0 and 1 and if the input is minus infinity and it's going to change and it's going towards positive infinity then the value of the output changes so this is the input negative infinity this way positive infinity that way and when it changes the output also changes now it generates output between 0 and 1 as the input gradually changes from negative to positive infinity it's used when the output, it, output is expected to be a positive number at ie between 0 and 1 it's considered a reasonable approximation of the real neurons so it's widely believed uh, maybe we can claim that it's widely believed that this is probably how the uh, real neural network works although it's an approximation and it's differentiable we can compute the derivative and that will help us very nicely in understanding and implementing the multi-layer perceptron and the back propagation uh, training algorithm the Gaussian function is based on the normal distribution if you f if you remember your basic statistics so it's the bell shaped curves that are continuous the node output which is which can be uh, either high or low is interpreted in terms of class membership so it belongs to class 1 or class 0 depending on how close the net input is to a chosen value of the average if 
you remember from the normal distribution we uh, need to be uh, we need to find two values the mean and the standard deviation mean and average are the same thing so mean is mu and standard deviation the sigma square if you remember and the output now is a function of those two it can be used this is the probability de probability density function if you remember that from basic statistics it can be used when we need fine control over the activation range and it's differentiable so the derivative can be obtained which means it can be used with uh, propagation training again now some other function and by the way we're going to use the sigmoid function in multilayer perceptron in back propagation and we're going to use the Gaussian transfer function in uh, radial basis function networks just remember that because I'm going to explain those in the coming few videos now some other uh, activation functions and these are from Heaton, Heaton Research .com, uh, a bipolar activation function which is used with neural networks that require bipolar numbers bipolar numbers are just like true or false a true can model positive one false can model uh, negative one the log transfer function similar to the sigmoid it's a, it uses an algorithm based on the log function the sinusoidal transfer function it's based on the sine function if you remember the sine function when data changes uh, periodically so it's used for data that changes periodically over time and the tan h it uses the hyper hyperbolic tangent function it's commonly used uh, so this function is commonly used because the output here instead of having output between 0 or 1 as we saw in the, the sigmoid this in this one here we can have output between minus 1 and plus 1 so it's quite useful in uh, classification and in data mining in general uh, so yeah it's commonly used as it works with both negative and positive numbers I hope that makes sense um, you can read more about these functions if you want and hopefully they will help us understand how uh, some different architectures of neural networks work thank you very much for watching I'm going to stop